Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria and I am the artist behind Mary's Hobby. So, it's a new week and we have a new video. Today we will paint together an old shoes cabinet and we have a lot of work to do because uh, we have to patch uh, some damages, we have to send some chipping finish, we have to uh, refill again all the patches uh, we have to prime and we have to paint and at the end to add some gilding wax uh, to the hardware so let's get started because we have a lot of work to do I got this piece for free uh, on my local marketplace uh, it was stored in a basement it was pretty dark there and I wasn't able to see all the damages it has uh, but after taking a look at it I decided it's a good idea to re re restore it because despite all these damages the piece was in a pretty good condition no shaking, good bones and has a lot of storage space I started as usually by giving the piece a good cleaning so first of all I vacuumed away all the dust and then I went over with uh, my Dixiebel's white lighting cleaner I uh, cleaned the piece good and then I rinsed it with some um, clean water and let it dry for about 1 or 2 hours I decided to go with this 2 part filler uh, to repair the damages on the trim around the drawers uh, you saw me using this before I'm going with this every time I have to do uh, some bigger repair this stuff is pretty easy to use you just uh, put uh, some um, some filler from the uh, container and then add a little bit of this hardening cream but just be aware you have approximately 15 minutes uh, depending on the uh, uh, temperature um, in the room you are working so it dries pretty fast and other stuff um, so you need to be very careful because these things like very 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 bad so you have to work in a um, well ventilated area uh, just for you to know I um, put a lot a couple of coats of this filler because I put one coat, I let it dry, I sand it and then I refilled again because uh, the missing uh, spots were pretty big. At some point just for some smaller uh, gouges I added some normal wood filler. I had also um, some peeling veneer in one corner and I just glued this uh, back with some uh, wood glue. Uh, so you could use uh, of course a syringe but since I didn't have one I just used my fingers. corner is almost done I still have to sand down this um, I have an used 80 grit uh, sandpaper the other corner is done I still have to to finish uh, one more um, one more drawer so um, first of all I put a, uh, two coats I think of the filler of that uh, strong filler and after that I um, I refilled with some um, normal uh, wood filler so uh, now the plan is to apply the I need to clean this and um, I will apply the primer because I usually with this kind of um, of pieces that have a lot of damages on the finish you can see um, better the damages when you have a coat of paint or a coat of primer on them so I will prime this and after that I will see if there is still a need to, to do some small repairs 
I assume that I will have to put some caulk around this frame. I already put here, you see? And then you are using a new roller. This is a microfiber one. Um, I saw this tip, I don't know who showed it to me. But uh, you can put some tapers, some painter tape on just to get rid of the of all the limp and stuff like this. So, because all this limp uh, will stay in your primer and you will have hard time to, to remove it. So just do a favor to yourself and prepare your um, new roller before starting uh, before start work and uh, as primer um, I'm using this one it's a German um, brand I really like it it dries really quick and it does an amazing job and I also like to line uh, my paint tray uh, with some olive foil and because it is uh, so easy to clean it I just um, drop away this one and my tray is clean and ready for the next project. You just saw some other projects of mine. Um, lately I discovered that um, applying the primer with a roller is so much easier and faster. So because applying with with a brush sometimes takes you uh, like forever so it's just like easy like this i will have to apply two coats of this because in some areas i uh, send it uh, i send the original finish to raw wood so I don't want to to have any issues uh, with my paint especially because I'm using um, I'm planning at least to use a very light color so I want to avoid any surprises okay so my piece is now uh, primed it's nice clean just looking so much better I have two coats of primer here so now mm, I will apply some caulk here if you can see um, there is like a like a space between the top and the side so I don't like how it looks so um, I will apply this one and this is paintable just to close this one you apply this uh, this caulk uh, just to make sure you clean it because it would look uh, not nice once you will paint over it so I will let this dry and after that it will be ready for paint so now I'm using some 240 grit sandpaper and I'm going very slightly over my surface uh, just to make sure that I don't have any bumps or stuff like this because they will show up uh, through my paint. So uh, for this project I'm using Fusion, uh, Fusion Mineral Paint. This is my first time using this and I'm using my oval small uh, brush, synthetic brush by Ligno Color, which I love uh, very much. So usually you see me pouring uh, my paint into another container, but unfortunately I run out of all my containers, so I will have to paint directly for my, for my job. Uh, Fusion is an all-in-one paint, so it means it has also a uh, top coat incorporated, so you don't have to seal it, but um, you are not allowed to use uh, water. 
and the instruction says that you have to apply it in thin coat. As you can see, I mainly apply it in one direction. I'm just trying to minimize to reduce the uh, brush strokes. So using long strokes. So it has a great coverage so far. I'm not sure that, but I, I estimate that I will need three coats for the full coverage. Okay, so now I have uh, two coats of paint on this. And as I said, um, I will need three coats. I mean, the coverage is already pretty good. But yeah, I just want to add another coat for, um, for like a saturated color. But before my uh, last coat, I will lightly sand um, this with this used to be a one one tw twenty grit sandpaper, but uh, it is used, and I think it's like about two hundred and something or three hundred. I will just lightly, lightly sand it. I don't want to remove the paint or something like this. I just want to make sure that my surface is um, super smooth. I really like how it feels. So now removing the dust and we are ready to apply the last coat. Uh, for the last coat I switched to my zebra brush, uh, one of my zebra brushes because um, uh, this is a big surface and working with a small brush it makes you, it makes it like really hard and it's uh, time consuming. So uh, I will use the same uh, technique working in, uh, in long strokes and just try to uh, not overwork it too much. Done one section. I'm going from uh, top to bottom in one long stroke. So I will do this to the entire piece. So um, I will apply uh, some furniture slab. Uh, this is called Big Mama Butter by Dixie Bell, and it smells like oranges, like real oranges. Uh, so this will uh, recondition and will rejuvenate the wood. I'm just taking a small amount and I'm rubbing it in the wood and then I will let it sit for about um, one hour or something like this and I will come back and I will um, remove the excess. Okay, so um, I put some painter's tape around my um, uh, the sides of my drawer because I sand them uh, down and I don't want to get any paint on this. I will leave them uh, like this bare wood. I will just add some furniture um, self on this and it will look very beautiful. Okay, so we are done. I think this is a very beautiful transformation. This cabinet will serve now for many years. Uh, to someone so let me know your thoughts in the comment below so please give me some thumbs up hit that subscribe button and thank you a lot for watching and i will see you next week